Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative is speaking to Richard Harmon about a bunch of projects. We also recognize him as Murphy in V100 that was on the CW. Thank you for your time, man. Welcome to the show. Again, thank you for having me. It's an, it's it's interesting too because you look at a lot of the projects that you've done, and obviously you're gonna, mm-hmm. Richard Harmon's going to go where the opportunities are, where the work is. But do you ever look back and think about the fact that you have been able to kind of play a lot of different characters? You have been able to pl- to work on a lot of different projects. That's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I just consider myself lucky at this point. I mean, and you know, obviously there's a lot of a lot of uh, work and patience goes into being lucky, but I consider myself wildly lucky to have kind of had the career I've had so far and hopefully that career for many more years to come. But I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed. Was, did it just kind of click when you were younger that like acting and storytelling was something you want to do? Did you always know you want to do something in the creative realm or did it kind of just happen? Not exactly. I mean, my, my family is all in, in the film business. Um, so it, it would have been a logical kind of step for me. And, and, and it is. Uh, but no, I don't think that was ever the thing I thought I would be doing. I wanted to be a wide receiver at the University of Notre Dame. And I don't know, you know, God just didn't bless me with that kind of body. Uh, <laughs> when I was 16 years old, and was like five foot seven and 120 pounds. It just wasn't going to work. Um, I think, yeah, I was, because I started acting when I was 10, just because mainly my, my older sister had done it. Uh, and she's a terrific actor. And I don't know if it was the thing for me at the beginning, but I knew that I loved being on set. And yep. then the older I got, the more I just started to care about, you know, the actually the, I guess the craft is the way that you would put it, of acting. Yeah. And I just started caring more and more and more. And it's it's just the one thing in my life that I just, if I, if I, if I'm not allowed to do it for like a couple months at a time, if I'm not working and I'm in between projects, like I get very antsy and pretty much everyone in my life will tell you if I'm not working, I'm not a fun person to be around. <laughs> yeah. You always have to, well, you, yeah, <laughs> I, can definitely I gotta see work. That. I just gotta work. I um, can't stay still. I just saw an interview recently with James Brolin talking about how he's mm-hmm. like, when I get to work, it's like the best time ever. Like I just love, yeah, exactly. Every, everything just feels like, everything feels like when you weren't working, everything was just like a half inch out of place. Mm -hmm. And then when all of a sudden you step on set and everything just sort of locks into, to how you feel like you should feel. Absolutely. That's that's definitely how it is for me. It's I, you know, yeah, it's just the best. I love it so much. People that grew up with like a, like a showbiz, like acting storyteller family. I feel Mm -hmm. like it's like, 50-50 50-50 because I've spoken to, you know, people like yourself and say, you know, my my, my yeah. parents were in the business, so I want to be in it. But then I'll yeah. speak to, like, people that are actors that, you know, um, it's like, uh, you know, married couple that they both act and they're kids and they not, they're not sure if they want their kids to also be actors. Yeah, well, my, exactly. par- my parents didn't. My parents didn't at all. They said, don't do it. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can completely understand why. Uh, I, get, I was a shy kid, so I don't think they thought acting was really the right avenue for me um and they are also to see what what this business can do to people which can be bad things but it also can do wonderful things and for me it, it brought me out of like you know my shell and uh made me feel very confident in just the person that i that i am and, and the, yep. the kind of quirks that i have in my personality like i i you know i'm proud of those things now yeah or i didn't need to be so i think it did good things for me it doesn't do good things for everyone that's for sure and i totally understand why they were nervous about me going into it um, but I think they're pretty, they're pretty happy. I did know, but it depends on the situation. It depends on the thing. You mentioned the football really? thing. And that's the first thing that comes to mind. Like the reason I love football is just kind of like who your matchup is, who you have, yeah. who your opportunity. It, it, it really depends on the script, which is yeah. like, <laughs> uh, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, which is awesome. Um, it was film it, like the film <laughs> festival circuit's always a, a fun time. It's an overwhelming time as well. It looked like you had a bunch of films or a bunch of projects that were involved with film festivals. Yes. What was that like for you? I mean, it's awesome. It was unfortunate since you know the last couple of years have been we've been in the middle of a pandemic. I don't know if you guys have heard, um, <laughs> but it, it, I didn't really get to go to any of the film festivals, really, mm-hmm. um, which was unfortunate because, you know, we're not traveling much, we're not doing all that stuff. I, I haven't done a really good, like, proper film festival run since I was probably 
21 years old, like nine years ago. And I had so much fun going like flying over to like, even though know, it could be a big city or a little town that it's showing and, and seeing the movie with, with a new audience all the time. Uh, I missed that. And it was unfortunate because yeah, I had the, the return, which is just an awesome horror movie that's out now. You can go rent it or, or buy it even. Awesome. Uh, and, and puppet killer and stuff like that. And we were <laughs> running through the, you know, the horror film, film festival circuit but i sadly didn't really get to go see any of it it yeah absolutely. It you were doing some press support but like, here's another thing too i mean you know like obviously you know based on what you're saying like you miss the interaction and being with people I miss and the interaction, everything. yeah yeah 100 the the other side of the things though I'm, I'm hearing a lot of people because you know all the all the junkets are virtual now right all the press junkets right people are doing it from their house and and everything people like that some people are enjoying that some people are enjoying that and they I can totally do that. get that i yeah. totally get it that's your thing but i'm i'm a i'm a people person yeah i love to go and i love i love to go and meet people and, and and do all that and it's it's part of the job i get to stay home most of the time as an actor you get a lot of time off <laughs> <laughs> That's people don't, don't realize the job <laughs> is like the job. It's funny when you actually go and work, it's almost like that's kind of not vacation, but that's like the fun time. And then the grind that is, is my like, fun time. Yeah. yeah. And then when I'm off work is, is the, how do you get to the next job? That's the tough part of being an actor. People, do people not realize <laughs> Richard that the job is auditioning? Do you think we're at the point where they're starting to understand that the people that are around it, like that's your job. You're an auditioner basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. And no, is that you're correct with that. And I, I don't know if people have come around to figure that out because yeah, once you're on set, I mean, that's, I mean, that's where the real job starts, but it's also where the fun starts. Yeah. And I mean, auditioning is fun. I will say that. I, I don't think that auditioning is, is inherently not fun. Yeah. There are times where it's not fun. <laughs> yeah. Where your heart is, well, I mean, that's also the fun part too, though. When your heart is like pounding out of its chest because you're close to something, but you need to prove it to the right people. Mm -hmm. uh, and when that goes well, then it's the greatest feeling in the world. If, if you feel like you messed it up in front of the producer or director or something, and then then all of a sudden, yeah, you're in a, you're in a two-day spiral. Yeah. And feeling horrible about yourself and then you, you know it's just picking yourself back up again but i think a good segue to what you talked about about you're a people person you enjoy it i mean i find that's an interesting kind of segue to the talking about the 100 because the yeah. 100 fans a lot of people know are like unbelievable and they're incredible oh <laughs> you know rabbit I, mean? I love yeah, it. it it's it's amazing and the show's not on air anymore you had seven seasons but it's just yeah. like i don't think there's a shelf life for that show to be honest with you I think people are going to love that show for a long time. And I think I, I'm hoping what I hope is in like, you know, 10 years or something, even more like a new generation of, of people can, can start watching it sort of like a, you know, like a battle star or something like that. Not that I'm comparing us to battle star. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get, you know, lambasted for that on the internet. I'm not saying that, but like in it, <laughs> akin to that, I would think that would be pretty cool. I, I would think that's very cool. If uh, there's some Murphy has characters in a lot of those shows. There's characters. Cool. I mean, there's similarities. I mean, you know, Murphy, we talked about it before. Lee, a lot of people think you were the worst. There's some kind yeah. of narratives about the misunderstood kind of coming cool. around and everything. Um, yeah. I mean, what was it like playing such a complex character like that? A lot of the characters in this show were very mean and bad. And yeah. then there was like some that were kind of on the fence a little bit here and there yeah. where you weren't sure, right? It was it was amazing. I mean, and and I give all that credit to to Jason Rothenberg, honestly, the boss man. He he let me go for you know seven seasons of like we just took that character on such an arc, and to, to the point of at the end of the seventh season, I I remember looking to him and going like, Jason, I don't think there's anything else we could do with him at this point. <laughs> I think I think we've done it all. And it was like Chef Kiss. Was it was like perfect. Off yeah. so hated and to go to being uh, you know one of the a character that that many 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 fans quite enjoy. People did not like him in the beginning. You watched the first. No, no, I mean, I was, if you. But that was my job, you know. Like it was, yeah. that was the, Jason was like, make them just detest you, and I went, I could do that. Yeah, PSA. And he me around, so he said, make. Can you make them like you? And I went, yeah, just give me some time. A little, per, a little PSA for people who have not watched the 100 yet, who are going to go watch Richard Harmon as Murphy. The, you will not enjoy him, his character not in the beginning. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's some psychopaths out there who have told they're like, you know, I loved you from day one. And I was like, you should get you should, uh, yeah. you should look at yourself. Oh then. There's um, something maybe you need to figure out about yourself. But I also it, do appreciate that. You mentioned, I believe you mentioned seven seasons in eight years. Is that what it is? Yeah, pretty much because we shot the pilot and then, you know, you take like six or seven months until you actually start shooting the first season from the time you shot the pilot. And then it's, you know, seven months on, five months off kind of thing for the next seven years. So it's yeah. weird now, like a full year out of it. Uh, 
getting back used to life where that's not it was like going to school it was yeah like you were we expected to go back to work on the hundred every year at the end of august we'd run until february and then you know then we'd be back trying to find a job or two in the five months we had off and then you go right back to the hundred and it was lovely it was sort of the most structured thing i think being on a long-running tv show is the most is the closest thing to a structured life that a that an actor could have is having that every year Absolutely. No, for sure. Yeah. Does it also kind of blow your mind that the show, because of like syndications and it was on Netflix in certain countries mm -hmm. and everything, I mean, my, like we're saying, they're saying we're in like the golden age of television and content film right now. Right. I mean, the Emmys were yesterday. I mean, we saw all the amazing shows that won and everything, but like my, the thing that's blowing my mind I'll is, that I did not see. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Like how quick things are hitting now, like globally. Yeah. Like yeah. people have access to the 100, a lot of countries that watch it. I mean, you're, you're probably getting like fan mail and e and messages from like, all over the world. Yeah, like, all it's, over the world. It blows it's my mind. Incredible. Like Murphy's yeah, global. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. It's like for it to, and I do love that about the internet. I'll say this is, you know, the, the connectivity of it all. I don't always love the internet so much, but I but I can say that it does bring so much good and when it comes to connecting different parts of the world that generally you just wouldn't be able to to know about and, and yeah. connect with. Yeah, it is the connectivity is unbelievable. I mean the 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 content out there, like the story and like the art character arcs like you mentioned with Murphy, like like the quality is fantastic. Like yeah. it's amazing how a lot of them are looking. But I truly think the best thing about global like content right now is that you're like the access to it. Like that to me just blows my mind. I think that kind of trumps everything else in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll agree with you there. Because people are saying, oh, like the quality is amazing. The writing is great. It looks good. And I agree. But yeah. if you like in the scale of like out wing, I think the global thing just like blows my mind, man. Well, it yeah, just like, it's amazing grab it off the table like, it's just one big table everyone's able to grab it off now it's awesome you did some horror films the horror genre yeah. is one that's kind of exploded and it's grown in terms of i think there's more ways to scare people now you don't need the traditional kind of jump scares or gore the films that yeah. you have done recently kind of have those traditional arcs in them mm -hmm. um do you agree that the genre has kind of take like been taken to new heights because of the fact that like they're not relying on the cheap pop scare, jump scares or everything. Like people are scary. Like society is scary, Richard. I think, yeah, I think, yes. Because I'll, I'll answer this as a, not as an actor. I'll answer this as a horror fan, yeah. which I am. Like I'm a massive horror fan. Me too. I think that genre has always been that way. Is It's been, the, the horror genre you've seen, you know, great filmmakers who haven't been able to get a chance other places come and work, make their magic, you know, in horror first and kind of, the genre is so open yep. to whatever. It's such an open genre um, that, yeah, I think it has grown for sure. And I love that. But I, I think there's always been those kind of those genre, you know, busting sort of films out there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I just hope it can, to your point, I hope it just continues to grow because it's a, it's a wonderful genre. And it's, it's also, it's, there's more ways to scare people nowadays, but it's also harder to scare people nowadays, I think. A hundred percent. Richard, there's a difference, in my opinion, of the mm -hmm. the scariest movie Richard Harmon has ever seen and the best horror movie Richard Harmon has ever well, seen. Too, too, too wildly different. Exactly. So for me, I know, I don't, I'm not sure what my favorite movie is for horror. Like, I'm not sure, but I do know the scariest one. Which that I've ever that? seen. It's the Strangers of Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman, like the oh, original. It was horrifying! I remember seeing that. I was in grade twelve, I think. It's and, terrifying. And me and my buddy saw it at the movie theater at like you know nine thirty p.m. It was, a, it was the nighttime show, and we lived up we lived up in the woods. So <laughs> that we doesn't like help. Separate, our separate houses, but we, after that movie, we were like, so like, so like sleepover, like old times' sake. <laughs> we'll sleep in the living room on the couches with the lights on. Yeah. yeah, that 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 movie scared me. I the, feel the, like when getting I I went to go see it with my sister and her friend, and I was pretty young at the time, and like we were just terrified on like the car ride home that someone was just gonna like gonna like pop in the car or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like oh it was, yeah, no, it, it was truly terrifying. But I, I don't maybe one movie. of the I have like a top ten for sure. I really love that movie, The Invitation. I don't know if you saw that one. That's on yeah. Netflix. Yep. Dinner party gone wrong, basically. Yeah, um, I love it. 
Love that. That that might be. I love that movie just because I just love what they did with like the slow burn of that film will make you sweat. Like it is such a slow burn. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. Yeah, it's that sort of. We've all been in those dinner parties, just not quite that way. Absolutely. Do you know what which yeah. ones that you enjoy on top of your head? Like like some obviously there's the classics I mean, the most too, fun right? one that, I, that i'll watch every year is halloween three season of the witch which is the only one without michael you know michael myers yep. uh but also halloween one i love like i love the i love classics and i love i love halloween and it's my favorite time of the year so yeah. i just love guys and masks doing bad things well it's pretty I like it's, and then the scariest like babadook was one that really shook me yeah up. That's so good. Uh, like, and then there's like just that uncomfortable fear, like uh, Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary's like that's baby. a terrifying film. Midsommar is like the because I think the fact that it's just oh, yeah, that, that made me so uncomfortable. Yeah, because it's, like, it's all like beautiful and flowers and sunlight and like yeah, yeah. That's a testament to that movie that I'll I, I never want to watch that movie again. No, I never I, want to watch it. And that's and that's because it's it did its job wonderfully. It's it's funny too because there's the Fear Street trilogy on Netflix that just took over the summer. Like that, mm -hmm. those became instant yeah. hits. And one of the guys that's in it that we've interviewed, Drew Sh Drew Scheid, um, he was in the 2018 Halloween. Um, he's the kid in the yeah. in the devil costume. You get like who gets. Stuff, yeah. Basically. Oh my god, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, really love that reboot that they did too. Yeah, uh, and we talked, we talked, I like, but like, it's it's insane because there's a lot of people like in the past Halloween movies that, like, you know, they were like person on phone who gets like killed by Mike Myers. Like, he's like actually like yeah, scene well, time and gets like killed by Mike Myers. I'm like, that's one yeah. of the most iconic, like horror icons of all time you get killed on screen it by would him. be a dream come true i would love it if they, if they make another one past halloween kills that's coming out in a couple of weeks then i'd love to try to try to be and then there. basically it's like he just has that he gets stabbed on a fence and then spoiler alert in fear street his character just gets decapitated so it's just like oh, he has spoiler. well yeah i said spoiler alert oh, did you not see yeah, them yet i have i saw the first one i haven't seen did you like the yet. first one i haven't seen two and three yeah it got an, it I, don't got know if it, I don't know if it was like the, the exact one for me, but like, yeah, I loved it for what it did. Yeah. More to think about, it's not really a big spoiler because there's a lot of like things that happen in that, in that, like, like it's, it's, it's slasher, right? Like, so, yeah. um, but uh, no, it's, it's amazing. The genre is amazing. The return, what was it like working on that? Cause that, that was like a little bit of a low budget film too, right? Yeah, it was an, it was an indie film. We made that in Winnipeg uh, in the middle of the summer, which was very warm and we were yeah. all in a in a haunted house together <laughs> and were like 40 degree heat outside oh never mind sorry uh like 105 degree weather outside <laughs> i didn't do the celsius to fahrenheit um it was awesome because it was it's a movie that bends a couple genres yep. together that i didn't see coming because i've always loved like the haunted house movie and i was like okay cool we're making a haunted house movie i'd love to do that i get to play a genius who's an asshole i'm I'll sign up for that. Yeah. And, but then I won't give anything away. Like by the third act, the movie really flips itself on its head and just goes in a complete direction that I had no idea that's what we were doing. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool. And I recommend it for anyone. Well, it's a great time to recommend it, man. I mean, yeah, October is right around the corner. <laughs> I'm one of those guys that I watch like a movie every, like I watch, like I'm going to watch like 50 horror movies in October. Like I'm one of those guys. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to do 365 movies this year, so one every day. Uh, I'm I'm ahead in in movies to days. I think I've watched like 276 so far this year. Man, and cause, you know, I was like, oh, it's pandemic. When's when's the other chance I'm gonna get to probably just do this? So I have so many recommendations, but I feel like you've seen. Well, no, a lot I think of them. after this, I'm honestly, I'm I think I'm gonna watch the second and third Fear Street. I want I want to see where they're going. I want to okay. see where they're going. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going. I wanted to thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn of the Chat, man. This was awesome. Oh, for sure, man. So they could, they can, they could. Uh, so you have the return that they could, like it's out. That's out now. Yeah, that's out now. Um, and then we have another movie that we shot years ago, and it's finally getting released. And it's such a fun horror movie. It's called Puppet Killer with Lee Majub uh, and Alex Ponovic, right? Lee, yeah. Lee called me literally <laughs> thirty, like thirty minutes before we get jumped on this chat. One of my best friends, also Alex's as well. Absolutely. He didn't call me though. Thirty minutes. Well, you know, so Alex has been on the show. Me. You've been on the show. Hopefully, Lee will get on the show, and then we'll have Come everyone. On, from, he's yeah. a wonderful person to chat to. Yeah, that's amazing. Where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Yeah, uh, Richard S. Harmon. 
on both Twitter and Instagram, and that's what I got. Also, if you actually want to know what I'm watching for movies, I'm on Letterboxd, which has become my favorite thing. <laughs> that is, that's uh, and that, that, that one I'm called Dickie Spooks, because that's my nickname in October. You know what? You're the I'm first person that. ever to plug their letterbox. Yeah, so, that, you know what? I'm, Don't follow me on Instagram. Don't follow me on Twitter. Nothing fun happens there. Find out what I watch. That's movies. huge. Like, oh, I'm going to put that in our description of the video. Like, his, your letter you box. That's yeah. awesome. Well, this I been, want people to know what I'm seeing. Absolutely. This has been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Richard Harmon and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.